Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on wherever you're watching this from. My name is Faraz Nassim, a recent master's student graduate from Florida International University, and today I will be presenting our work titled MINOS, a lightweight real-time cryptojacking detection system. So let's start off with an outline of how this presentation is going to go. We'll start off with the introduction where I give some background information about cryptojacking malware, the current detection systems and drawbacks, followed by our contributions. This will be followed by a technical approach where we go over our framework and its implementation. This will be followed by uh, the evaluation of our framework and the overhead analysis. And then finally, we will conclude with the conclusion. So what is cryptojacking malware? Cryptojacking malware is a type of fileless malware that is implemented in browsers and mines cryptocurrency without the user's knowledge or consent. So basically, a malicious actor will embed a website with a crypto mining script. The end user, me or you or anyone, will visit the website and once the website is fully executed, uh, the mining process will start and depending on how long the end user is actually on the website and mining for the actor, the, the threat actor will get a monetary compensation proportionate to how much uh, cryptocurrency has been mined. So is cryptojacking malware really file this? And to answer that question, we have to talk about WebAssembly. Now, WebAssembly is a binary low-level instruction format that allows code to be run on browsers in near native speed. It runs in parallel with JavaScript is not meant to replace it. Um, it is actually the target of compilation of a lot of high-level languages such as C, C++, and Rust. Um, using the Inscription toolchain, these can be compiled to WebAssembly. And the majority of cryptojacking malware is actually implemented in WebAssembly due to the near native speed uh, advantage that it has. So malware authors will write code in C or C++ that perform mining functions, and they will use the Inscription toolchain to convert this code into a WebAssembly module. Then on the web page end, this WebAssembly module will be accessed using the WebAssembly.instantiate streaming function. Um, which will convert this module into a binary. This binary is then executed and the binary is actually what performs the uh, mining functions. And if you look at the decompiler view of such a WebAssembly binary, you can see that it was compiled using mscripten and you can see the function names of uh, hashing operations such as kryptonite create, kryptonite destroy, and kryptonite hash. So the current detection systems in the literature come in three types, browser-based detection, standalone detection, and network-based detection. In browser-based detection, runtime features such as CPU and RAM usage, WebAssembly code, execution times, etc. are used. In standalone detection, features such as system call and OP code sequences are used. While in network-based detection, the network flows analyzed and features such as uh, network bikes are used. <coughs> Now the problem with all of these detection systems is that since they rely on dynamic features, in the actual collection of those dynamic features, the cryptojacking malware is allowed to run and execute for a certain amount of time, effectively mining for that amount of time. And this is counterintuitive to a detection system like this that is supposed to prevent something like this from happening. Other pitfalls of detection systems include um, the high overhead that is associated with collecting these dynamic features, the, the quality of the web surfing experience is affected for the user because of this high overhead and there may be inaccuracies or miscalculations in these detection systems due to background processes or background noise. Motivated by these drawbacks, we introduced a novel cryptojacking detection mechanism that implements a WebAssembly binary classifier to create a lightweight, inexpensive, and fast uh, framework which we named MINOS. We also introduced a novel WebAssembly binary classification technique that uses the grayscale images of the binaries to train a CNN. And then finally, our evaluation concluded that uh, Minos was capable of detecting the latest in the wild cryptojacking samples with an accuracy of 98.97% while maintaining very low overhead. <coughs> so now let's move on to the technical approach of our framework. So it is common knowledge now in the literature that malware images can be converted into grayscale images. Similarly, WebAssembly binaries can also be converted into grayscale images. You can see an example on the right of a converted cryptojacking malware sample binary. You can see each of the 12 sections of the WebAssembly binary uh, visible as well. So we hypothesize that since cryptojacking malware implement the same hashing algorithms over and over again, uh, that they might be semantically and syntactically similar to each other, and as a result, their image representations might be similar to each other. 
if you look at this image at the bottom right, you can see that our, our hypothesis was correct as the first row of images consists of cryptojacking malware samples and the second row of images consists of uh, benign samples. So you can see the cryptojacking malware samples all look visually uh, almost identical or very similar to each other while the benign samples are all unique from each other while also being distinguishable, easily distinguishable from cryptojacking malware samples. So an overview of our Minos framework, it consists of four components. Um, the first component is a WebAssembly binary auto collector. Now this component basically checks if the website being visited by the user uh, produces any WebAssembly binaries and if so, downloads the binary to a specified folder. The preprocessor converts this binary into an array of integers and then normalizes and reshapes the array. The WebAssembly classifier consists of a CNN that is pre-trained on a data set of 150 malicious and 150 benign WebAssembly binaries. And finally, the fourth and final component is a notifier, which basically takes the predictions from the WebAssembly classifier. And if any of the predictions are um, found to be malicious, then the user is informed of the presence of mining activity or if it's benign, the user continues browsing uninterrupted. So before we talk about the implementation of the actual framework, let's talk about the data set that was used to train the WebAssembly classifier. So the data set consisted of 150 benign and 150 malicious WebAssembly binaries and was compiled using various resources. A breakdown of the resources can be seen here. Seismic, Minesweeper, and Mush et al. are all papers in the literature that have worked with WebAssembly-based cryptojacking malware samples and they were kind enough to share their data sets with us and we thank them greatly for that. We use VirusTotal and VirusShare to collect other samples. So here we use VirusShare to collect a large number of samples and then we use the VirusTotal API to filter through these samples for cryptojacking malware uh, samples that used WebAssembly. NoCoin is just a blacklist of websites that are known to use cryptojacking malware or implement cryptojacking malware and made with WebAssembly is a website that showcases um, other websites, projects, or web applications that use WebAssembly. So now we move on to the implementation of each component in our framework. And the first component, the WebAssembly binary auto collector, is basically a script written in Node.js that uses the Puppeteer Node library to communicate with Google Chrome um, over the DevTools protocol. And what this script basically does is it wraps functions that instantiate WebAssembly modules and downloads the modules binary. And in particular, the, the function that we're concerned with is the WebAssembly.instantiate streaming function as shown here. And the script is basically just running in the background uh, while the user is browsing the web, downloading any instantiated WebAssembly binaries to a specified folder. <coughs> Now our second component is the preprocessor. You can see uh, a pseudocode representation of our preprocessor here. In the first two lines, um, the specified folder is checked for the presence of binaries. And then in lines four to 12, if the directory contains binaries, each of those binaries is converted into an array of 8-bit unsigned integers, basically converting it into a grayscale image. Then in lines 13 to 14, the file is closed and deleted from the folder so that the folder is ready to receive uh, more WebAssembly binaries as the user continues to browse the internet. The array is then uh, resized and reshaped to be sent to the classifier's input. And then finally, we end the function with a call to another function that will classify the converted uh, and reshaped arrays. And the function ends with a recursive call to the same function so that the directory is continued to be checked for the presence of new binaries. <clears throat> and now for the implementation of our third and fourth part, parts. So the classifier is a simple CNN uh, that is built using TensorFlow and Keras. Uh, it consists of three sets of convolution layers, followed by max pool layers with an increasing number of filters in each uh, convolution layer. The kernel size is set to 3, 3, with the pool size being set to 2, 2. The model is trained on 100 epochs using the RMS prop optimizer with a learning rate of 0 0.0001. And basically what this function is doing, it, it is taking the converted images from the last function and it is sending them to the model to receive a prediction. Those predictions are appended to an array and if in those predictions uh, there is any instance of a malicious uh, binary, the user is notified through the notify user function. 
here a zero signifies a benign sample and a one signifies a malicious sample. So if there's a one in in the results array, the user is notified. <coughs> now we move on to how our model and our framework performed. So in terms of the model on the training data set, the model converges to 100% accuracy on both the training and test data sets after 30 epochs. In this case, the training set was actually split up uh, using an 80-20 um, split into training and test sets. Um, and then you can see in the optimization learning curve, you can see that both the training and test loss decreased to a point of stability after approximately 30 epochs, just as <coughs> with the accuracy. And then finally, the area under the ROC curve, as you can see over here, is one, indicating that the model's ability to distinguish between uh, benign and uh, malicious WebAssembly binaries is perfect. So we wanted to see how Minos would perform in the wild. And to do that, we created an in the wild data set compiled using uh, two sources, public www and Tranco 1 million. Public www is just a search engine that searches uh, websites code for certain keywords and Tranco 1 million is our replacement for Alexa 1 million because Alexa 1 million is no longer maintained or published. And using both these sources, we were able to come up with a total of 682 websites with 613 being benign and 69 being malicious. To label these websites, we use a manual labeling processes using three criteria. We would check the decompiler view of the WebAssembly binary like so. We would check the file size of the WebAssembly binary. As you can see, uh, benign and malicious WebAssembly binaries differ in size uh, quite drastically. And then we would check for the presence of multiple worker threads, which is a characteristic of crypto mining malware. You can see here snippets from the Google Chrome um, dev tools, uh, the presence of multiple worker threads. So on this in the wild data set, Minos achieved an accuracy of 98.97%, correctly classifying 675 websites out of 682. The seven that were misclassified consisted of two false positives and five false negatives. And through our analysis, we were able to conclude that most of the benign websites were e-commerce websites, games, and web applications, while the malicious websites were mostly um, adult video sites or illegal video streaming sites. <coughs> so now we move on to the overhead analysis of our framework. For your reference, I've provided the system uh, specifications here. The processor is i7, the RAM is 16 gigs, and the OS is Windows 10. So training the WebAssembly classifier used up 4.3% of RAM and took 0.5 seconds. While once the data set was converted into images, it was stored in virtual memory taking up only 1.5 kilobytes of space. The time taken to train the model is 24.8 seconds, while the training process utilized a maximum of 4.1% of RAM and 52% of the CPU. Now with the Minos implementation, the preprocessor script running in the background recursively uses a constant 6.3% of the RAM and 0.1% of the CPU. <coughs> Once a WebAssembly binary is collected, the RAM and CPU usage um, increase ever so slightly to 6.5% and 4% respectively. And Minos was actually able to detect every cryptojacking sample in our framework on an average of 25.9 milliseconds, which is incredibly fast. So now I will conclude uh, talking about the benefits of Minos. So Minos has numerous benefits. Um, firstly, it is lightweight and it has near instant detection capability. As you saw from our performance evaluation, it was able to accurately detect every cryptojacking malware sample in our data set within 25.9 milliseconds. It is free from admin privileges. Um, it does not need administrative privileges to collect dynamic features such as memory usage, heap execution times, RAM usage, etc. It is platform independent, which means it does not use any OS specific tools and can be run on any operating system. It is robust against common evasion attempts. And finally, the quality of the web surfing experience is minimally affected for the user as the user is informed within a fraction of a second and the overhead is substantially low. These are the references used throughout the presentation. We'd like to thank the U.S. National Science Foundation and the Cyber Florida Capacity Building Program for supporting our work. And that concludes the presentation. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them.